Hello there. Wednesday afternoon. It's about half past two now or something. I'm out for a walk camp with Graham. There's Graham. Hi folks. We've just come to some local hills for a, for a quick one. The wife's at work tomorrow, so I've got to get, I've got to be back for like nine. So it's nice that we've got a choice. And we've got a local hill we can come out to. It's going to drop to freezing tonight, but there is no wind and no rain. Absolutely no wind forecast. I'm over the moon. I'm going to give this trail star a good go, see if I can sort out some pitches. So we'll see you when we're on the top. The hills are looking beautiful today. And we're going to pan round now. Just look at them cheviots, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. There's almost an inversion going on up there as well, look, isn't there, with them clouds? Be a perfect day on the Cheevits with no wind. You just don't get a camp on the Cheevits without the wind anymore. Today would have been that day. But unfortunately, time prevents. So I'm still going to have a wonderful, enjoyable camp on a local hill. Beautiful. Right up on the top of the hill fort now. Looking down to Rothbury. Cheviots, I just can't stop looking at them today. I'm not going to give it away because I'm not there. A lot of mole activity. This is lovely up here, isn't it? On the last camp, my first time using the trail star, people did say I did it a bit baggy and I left it uh, slack. But I, I was trying something with the door, but obviously I didn't quite know how it worked. So this time I've pitched it differently and it's spot on. So let's have a look, little look round camp. All right, I've got me a bag of noodles here, homemade porridge for the morning, coffee bags, tea bags. I've got a bun, two uh, Angus burgers, an onion and some oil. Got my frying pan as well, it's in my bag. And I'm, I'm cooking on gas today because of the temperatures and that fantastic little serotonin table, that's going to be with me all the time. I mean, look at that table, fabulous. But anyway, the trail star, right. I can see why people use that as the door. It's an easy reference point in the label. So I've got the one guy coming down with an adjustable hitch knot down to that peg. I've got two slightly longer guy lines on these two front corners and shorter guy lines on the others. But look at the tension in that. Just look at the tension in that. What a top. And it's not even flat ground, look. I'm pitching across a ditch. That's absolutely fabulous, isn't it? Whee! We'll give it one of those for the top. But look at the tension of that. That really is a nice pitch. Nice and tight. And I might slacken un underneath. There's two, there's two points there and there. There's points all the way around for a washing line. Well, I've put a washing line up across there to, to take the hoop of the ML MLD bivy. I might slacken them off a bit because I don't like the way they're, they're twisting it. But we'll have a look inside. It's a fabulous tarp, that. If you love your tarp camping, woo -hee. Right, let's get inside. Oh, dear. See, I've got a little bit of a washing line there, look, for me, uh, the hoop. I'm using the MLD Event Soul Bivy. The only reason I'm using that tonight, I know we're saving it for the Scotland trip in, in April. I've got this new winter mat. It's 10 centimetres thick. It's an R value of 7.4. That, if I put that mat in my, in my army bivvies or the hunker, I can't actually turn round. It's, it's too tight on the body for the shoulders. But this bivvy is absolutely monstrous. So, you know, the mat's actually 1,050 grams. It's a fabulous looking mat. I see how warm it is. 
So it doesn't matter that that's a thousand grams because the bivvy's only 400 and the tarp's only 400. If I was using the army bivvy, that's 1500 grams. So uh, this is some setup. I mean, the space under here, look, it's ridiculous. You could get somebody else this side of the pole. Right, I've been given some t shirts and some shirts to wear, and the company's called Fio Buck. F I O B O C. Fio Buck. It's an online thing only, I think. I've been given three in size large, and I've been given an extra large. Why, why the difference in size in the scent, I don't know. But this is, let's have a look at them. I might as well have a look. This is a modal, a modal blend along sleeve T. It's lovely and soft. It's got a high tech fibre, four way stretch, but a soft, fine texture, and it really is fine. It's 42% lensing modal. 49% polyester, 9% spandex. Now, this is the extra large, but it actually fits on top of the uh, other layers. I'll show you, I'll take this one off. That actually fits on top of the, the large layers. Now this one, this is size large. Let's pull it out of the trousers. This is like a proper base layer. This is size large. This is, a performance proactive crew neck long sleeve tee moisture wicking quick drying breathable 70% 75% nylon 25% spandex absolutely comfortable but this is like a normal base layer whereas that other one was super soft I'll show you some other ones now as well right, I took the base layer off now this one is a smooth blend, half zip, mock neck tea. It's high tech fabric, breathable and soft. It certainly is soft. It wicks sweat, dries fast, four way stretch, 75% nylon, 25% spandex. So it's the same materials as the lightweight one, but this is a, a slightly heavier one. Keep you warmer. You couldn't wear the two together, but if it was really cold, you could wear this one, or well, that one's more your summer weight. It's lovely and soft, it really is. Now, this is the one I'm most excited about. It's, it's under their sweater range, and it is. It's heavy thermal, zero degrees to 10 degrees centigrade. Or, well, well, it's zero to 10 C, so whether that's Celsius or centigrade, it's a stay smooth fleece long sleeve tee. Exothermic fibre, it locks the heat in, it wicks moisture, keeps you warm and dry. It's 18% lyocell, 10% warm ginger, 42% acrylic, 18% viscous, and 12% spandex. But I kid you not, this is size large. It's I've never felt a fleece as smooth and nice. It's absolutely incredible. It's so smooth. I really do like this one. This is going to be my nightwear of choice for the for the cold. It's beautiful. Anyway, I'm 83 kilos, six foot three, with a 36 inch waist. So that, there's the fit. So these are large. The black one was extra large. It's a bit too big, but it goes over the others for an extra layer. These are absolutely excellent. They really are. We'll keep this one on now because I'm going to wear this one tonight. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, it's that time. It's brew time. Well, cheers, Sean. It's just, I'm sorry you couldn't make it today, but I'm still using a couple of those coffee bags you give me. They're beautiful. Can't beat a nice bit of coffee, can you? Smashing a little table, isn't it? Look at that. I haven't even got boots on tonight because uh, it's a nice close walk to the car. Here's Graham's setup. DD Superlight Tarp. DD Elan Bivy. Perfect setup. The way he's got it flying the, the tarp, it just keeps all the condensation off the bivy. 
you've got to give it to to uh, Alp Kit and DD. They both do perfect kit. Fabulous setup. I'm just chopping up this onion. We'll swap over the cooking utensils. Oh, got to have a slurp. Oh, a nice slurp. Yeah, I nearly put my milk in then for my oil. I don't like cooking red meat, I hate it. But, it's what I fancied tonight. Had them frozen so they were stuck together. We'll get these cooked up and then we'll get the onions in, put them on the bun, then I'll do some more water for me noodles. Hey, I love a brew. I've got to have a brew. Turn the gas down a bit. I'm burning me burgers. I have them well done anyway because I can't stand red meat. They've got to be well cooked. I'll get the onions done as well. Right, that's the noodles done. I'll give the burgers a little bit more, just to heat them up. I want it nice and hot, cold weather. A bit of grass. A bit of grass out now, I wondered it, eh? That's about as adventurous as it gets for me, noodles and a burger. Because I don't, I don't come away to cook. I come away to camp. Makes a change than just the dark in the hills. You can see the lights of a town. It just gives you something to watch, doesn't it? Just going to sit down and have a brew. That little table's fantastic, isn't it? Always somewhere s sturdy and flat for your brew. Excellent. Somewhere to put your brew when you're camping outside. All the bracken. Serotonin pocket table, sturdy and safe. Somewhere for your brew. Cheers. Perfect travel companion. 
Right, we're just chilling down, having a bit of a chat by one of Graham's buddy burners. It's just nice just to, to chill out. It's just a bit of heat to make it pleasant. Couldn't really bring the bush box up here because it's, it's all unspoilt and there's no wood anyway. So we're just sitting chilling. I don't know what the temperature is now, but it's freezing. It's got to be around the freezing point. I haven't checked. I'll have a look on my phone in a minute. But uh, I've been lying in my sleeping bag just editing my film and looking at the news and that. I've had to keep my damn jacket on. I've got the Rab 1100 Ascent sleeping bag. I've got a R7.4 mat. And I've still got me down jacket on. It's ridiculous. But if that's what I need to be warm and comfortable, what does it matter? You put your own warmth and comfort first. Don't worry about how much you've had to put on. The main thing is I'm enjoying the camp. I'm out in the wild. It's freezing. I'm warm and I'm going to have a good night's sleep. And I've got another brew. What more could you want? I'm spread out a bit at the minute. I've got stuff all over the place, but uh, it's palatial under this tarp. It's ridiculous. Obviously, there's no wind tonight, so it doesn't matter how I spread out. There's nothing can get blown away. No mess, nothing. On, on your normal camps, I'm a bit tired here at bedtime because I keep it all away. But uh, we'll see you in the morning anyway. Good night. Well, it's half past six. I've just woke up. I'm doing myself some porridge and a brew. So last night, I put that nice fleece sweater on. And I thought I'll, be, I'll get nice and warm in the sleeping bag. Well, I didn't. So I took that off. I put the black t-shirt back on and the green base layer. And I put my damn jacket on. And I've slept in this great big jacket in the Rab 1100 sleeping bag all night. And honestly, I've slept like a log. I haven't sweat, but I've been so warm. I went to bed and we, because we were sat out by that little buddy burner, I must have chilled. And it was too late then just to, just to wear a, a thin layer. My feet were like ice. Thinking now, yeah, I had ice cold feet. So I put my thick socks on, my thermal bottoms, put my trousers back on, left my fleece jumper on, tried that. My legs started to warm up, but not my top half. So I took the fleece off because I couldn't get another, it was too hot with the down jacket on the top. So I put those two thin layers back on, on the down jacket. And that's how I've slept. But it, I mean, there's been no cold coming up from the ground from this mat. So I've had a great night's sleep. And I'm just surprised just how many clothes I've had to wear. I mean, a few years back, I've been in this 1100 bag with just a T-shirt on. But I suppose if you change, you've got to adapt, haven't you? So it was nice to have the choice of layers. Anyway, I'm going to have my breakfast. On the, on the last camp I did, I talked about this little torch failing, this little trust fire torch failing. But I emailed uh, Kevin at Trust Fire and he, and he asked their technical department. And they said a quick test of the battery. Charge it up fully and see if it lasts 90 minutes. And sure enough, I did it. It lasted 80, 88 minutes. So there's nothing wrong with the battery. It was the fact I was using it on and off in, in such low temperatures now. So the, the torch hasn't failed at all. It was my use of it, not, not understanding the batteries and the temperatures. Now, I've got this new anchor, 10,000, uh, 20,000 power bank. I bought a couple of them ready for my trip for next year. You meant to get five full iPhone chargers off one of these. Well, I had three. I've been trying it rather than use the mains at home. I had three, and last night was going to be the fourth. On my phone battery in the cold last night started to deteriorate, so I hooked it up to this. And then, sure enough, it only charged my phone to 40%, and that was going to be the fourth charge, not five. So the temperature of this, the, 
the cold temperature affected my power bank as well, so there's a lot to learn about rechargeable stuff and temperatures. I'll have to test the power bank properly in the house to make sure you do get five charges. Now, if I'm away for a couple of weeks, two twenty at two twenty thousand amp power banks theoretically would have given me ten charges, but if it's cold, it's not going to be anywhere near. And the time they take to recharge, if you do get access to a power point, you've got no chance. You just need a full day to charge them. So power it's going to be my biggest problem, I think, to, to, to film in my trip. It's something to think about. But I'll give, I'll give the power banks a good test. I mean, they're anchor ones, so they should be all right. I mean, it's the best make, isn't it, for power banks. Of course, a long-standing make, whether it's the best or not, I don't know. But I'll test them in the house to get five full charges. And then I've still got the winter to come out and play and see what, what difference the temperature makes. Maybe I'll bring the two power banks out, both fully charged. And then, and then use one to fa you know, charge my phone. And then see if the other one's actually dropped overnight in the temperature without using it. I can't think how else to test them. Anyway, I've had a great big bowl of porridge. I've had a tea. I'm going to have a coffee now and then start packing up because I'll have to be away for about eight. It's seven o'clock now. Well, I'm all packed up there apart from the tarp. I'll, sh I'll show you this tarp. It's, uh, it hasn't moved in the night, but there's been no wind anyway, but it seems to shed the rain really well. I've got me, uh, let's have a look. I'm got a light in one hand and a phone in the other because my, my adapter's not play, playing up. I'm all packed up. I've just got the tarp to take down. So uh, we'll do that in a minute. Let's put this down a minute. I've had to put my little uh, pack light on top of the down jacket, but it's not big enough. It, it covers most of it just to keep the rain off. But uh, these T-shirts I've been wearing in the night, I'll put the black one back on. That's the extra large one. And I've got the uh, the base layer one underneath it. In lovely and comfortable under the down jacket. I haven't sweat at all. So they've kept me hot and warm. And they haven't, uh, they haven't got wet and damp. So they appear to be good clothes. And this black one, I can see me wearing that in the day. It's nice and it's nice. Nothing to iron and you can just sling it on. <laughs> Great. Anyway, I'm going to get packed up. Anyway, leave no trace as always. That's where I was pitched just there. Leave no trace. Just got my tripod to pick up and my walking poles. Graham's packing up down there. Right, back at the car now. It's been a great camp. Really miserable cold morning to pack up. Damp, icy. The rain, my fingers are numb. But I've had a great walk in. I enjoyed the setup. I enjoyed playing with the tarp. We had a great evening sat by Graham's body burner. And uh, we're now away. So if you've enjoyed it, please leave a comment and uh, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.